Today I'm gonna be sharing all of my video settings for the a7 IV to get the most out of this camera. First things first is shoot in 4K 10-bit. Now, I think this goes without saying, but if you bought a camera that can shoot in 10-bit, then you should really take advantage of it. Don't compromise because the file sizes are too big. Unless your workflow really doesn't allow for 10-bit, then I guess 8-bit is fine, but if you can shoot in 10-bit, you really should shoot in 10-bit. Also, make sure you're always filming in the highest bit rate possible for whatever frame rate you're filming in. That would be 100, 140, or 200 megabits per second for 24, 30, and 60p respectively. Again, you just want the camera to capture as much information as possible so you have the most amount of latitude in post. Now on to the codecs. Now this is one area where I don't film in the highest available setting. Uh, the highest available would be the XAVC SI, which is the all intra codec. And personally, I didn't even run tests to see if it was like better image quality or anything. I just looked at the file sizes and I immediately just disregarded it. I'll show you a quick sample right here. So right now my camera is in XAVC S and it's in 24 frames a second and it's showing me five hours and 23 minutes. If I quickly switch that over to 60 frames, again, XAVC S, that's two hours and 42 minutes. For a full wedding day, I think that's perfectly respectable. I've never really filled up a 256 gig SD card for a full wedding, but if I quickly switch over to all intra, now my 24p time is down to two hours hours and 18 minutes and my 4k 60 time is down to just 55 minutes <laughs> that in my opinion is just ridiculous and I don't see myself doing that again this is a 256 gig SD card and in 4k 60 it'll fill up in 55 minutes these SD cards are not cheap they're roughly $350 for one and I have six of them at the moment and I would have to buy six more to support all intra and I'm not willing to spend literal thousands more just to shoot an all intra so I personally think XAVCS is totally fine respectable you buy a 256 gig SD card and it will last you an entire day. For SD cards, I do recommend the ProGrade 256 gig V90 cards. I've been using them pretty much exclusively since I picked up my first a7 IV. I buy two per camera. It's always set to simultaneous record and I pretty much never touch it. 256 gig is enough to last me the entire day. So I don't have to worry about swapping out SD cards in the middle of the day. And I always have a backup running. So I have six of the exact same SD card for all three of my cameras. And that's what I use and highly recommend. I used to use SanDisk cards back in the day, but a few of them broke on me, so I just don't mess with them anymore. Again, that might just be my personal experience, but ProGrade seems to get the job done for me. I also always have focus breathing compensation turned on, so if my lens supports it, it just works in the background and I don't really see a downside. When it comes to stabilization, I usually have it in the standard setting when I'm on a tripod, which is most of the day, but I do have the shortcut to switch it to active right in my function menu, so it's super easy as soon as I pick up my camera from a tripod if I want to go handheld or something I just quickly switch it to active that way I get the best of both worlds I'm not going to get any additional cropping or any jitters when my camera is just supposed to be stationary and when I'm shooting handheld I still get the benefit of the active stabilization and when you're handheld a little bit of the extra crop really doesn't make a difference white balance is also something I have to set custom for every new location I go to and when I first heard that you could set the white balance to this uh, exposure compensation dial up top because Sony made that adjustment and now this is a customizable dial I was really excited because I thought you could just rotate the dial and you know change the Kelvin value but instead their implementation is really weird and it basically just lets you toggle between the different modes instead which I think is quite dumb so basically what I've done is I've just set another uh, shortcut in my function menu for white balance and I custom set it for every location a few other settings I have set in my custom menu is my audio levels again quick access they're right there uh, focus peaking on or off it's right there as well and if I want to change my frame rate that's again just in my uh, function menu white balance like we said and then another thing I have is if my camera is simultaneous recording again I don't touch this setting for like 99% of the time I want everything going to two different SD cards at the same time but again if there's an emergency and I'm out of SD card storage instead of having to delete some of the footage I don't want to do that I would rather just assign it to you know uh, swap so it only records to one card and when that fills up it records to the other it's something I really don't like doing but in case of an emergency I have that as a quick setting as well in my function menu for picture profile it's pp8 slog3 
you really shouldn't be filming in any other picture profile. Converting from S-Log to Rec. 709 is really, really easy these days. You can just go buy some phantom lots or any kind of conversion lot. And it's basically a one-click solution and your footage just looks so much better for it. Personally, again, I have a lot of projects that have quick turnaround times and I still don't bother with s Cinetone or any other profile. I just really think Sony's made the S-Log3 workflow super simple and especially if you have the right LUT, you do a little bit of research, you get the proper LUTs and you're just set. You don't have to do anything. I personally use Phantom LUTs and they've been serving me very well. I highly recommend them. I'm not affiliated with them. I don't get any commissions or anything for saying this, but I highly recommend the Phantom LUTs. I'll link them below. Not an affiliate link at all. But yeah, S-Log3, use some Phantom Lots and you'll be golden. A quick tip for you guys is that in the settings, you can actually make it so that all of your photo and video settings are separate, which I highly recommend that you can actually use the dial on top. And then if you're in S-Log3 for your video and you switch to photos, you don't have to be in S-Log3 anymore. It can switch to whatever profile you were in last. And that's just a really handy feature and I highly recommend it. That's the beauty of this little dial on top. It just makes switching between both really, really easy you just have to remember to toggle it on in your settings for my custom buttons i have c3 set to the aps-c crop mode it's just something i've done for many years now ever since my a7 III, so i just don't see a reason to change it now it's nice and easy it's on the far left so all my second shooters third shooters know as well that quickly you want to go into aps-c mode you press c3 and it does that right away and i use c1 for the gamma display assist i don't use this a ton because i usually have like an atomless monitor on top but in case in case the battery dies from my monitor, I can quickly hit C1 and that way I don't have to look at like the really washed out log footage on the back of my LCD. It kind of applies a conversion LUT, like a standard Sony conversion LUT on it, which works fine. This one is really fun because I set the AF on button to toggle between autofocus and manual focus. This way, you know, even if my lens doesn't have that toggle, I can quickly just press AF on. And sometimes I've found that it's just easier. Your hand is just right there and I quickly can, you know, toggle between those two things. If for example, I'm focused on something and I know somebody's gonna walk through frame. I don't want my camera to lose focus, so quickly press that, switch to manual focus. It's seamless, the person walks through frame and I quickly press it again, back to autofocus. No hunting, no nothing, and it's basically just perfect. Then the AEL button on the top right, I have that set for zebras, so they quickly, you know, toggle on and off and they work fine. That's what I use mainly to expose my shots. Last but definitely not least, I have the C2 button on the top. This one I actually have just set to the menu because I find that the menu button on the left is just in a horrible spot. So I just like the fact that quickly from the top, I can just access the menu just like that. So C2 button, I just have set to the menu. So everything's just on my right hand and that's just easier. All right, guys, that was it for me today. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to leave it a like, subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys next time.